Hey everybody, uh, Worst Pogue here, and today we're going to be talking about the SPR concept and what considerations do you need to take to build your own, and kind of the role of where everything falls and why you would want to build one. So the SPR is intended as a fire team or squad marksman rifle that uses the common cartridge between the squad, or a similar cartridge between the squad um, so you want to have the same type of weapon system as your squad so if everybody's running large frame ARs you want to run a large frame AR uh, if you're running small frame ARs across the squad you don't want to run a large frame AR as the marksman rifle so yeah, you don't want to kind of cause more issues than need be. Now, if you're running a different cartridge between the rest of the squad, you don't need to have that as a single upper weapon system. So how I have mine set up to where I have a upper receiver, which I have right here. I have a upper receiver group. Now it's of course on a lower right now but the lower is obviously not the one that normally goes to or the one that is built for this but it is not just this is my float around lower so uh but this is my upper receiver group that's in six five grindle that goes on the lower receiver of my fighting rifle now this lower is modeled after my fighting rifle but just with a uh, b5 precision style stock rather than a fighting style CTR stock with the LaRue riser. So similar comb height, um, just a little bit more precise length of pull, but yeah. So that allows me to run a different caliber from my squad if need be. So that way I have just a little bit extra range. Now to get the bullet out to where it needs to be, um, and where it kind of falls off on its effectiveness, which in my opinion, in my experience, it's around 850 yards is where the bullet loses its common kill ability, where it starts taking more than one round to put down a target with good shot placement. Now, with 5.56 and Mark 2.62, you really got to, get close to 750, 800 to really maximize that. Now, if that's in an ideal situation with like a 20 inch barrel or 22 or 24 inch barrel, now when you get into the 18 inch, you, you fall closer to the 700 mark. Um, and of course, these are more, these aren't just 50 yard increments. They're more gradual than that, but just for reference, 18 inches kind of where you fall short so when you get into mark 12 range like what's here when you get into a mark 12 range like what's here um you have kind of a shortfall of effectiveness with 556 five, now you can push 556 five, out further but it kind of peaks out at 800 you can't do anything to get it out past that for its effectiveness with Mark 262 without making it unsafe loading. That's Bubba's piss and hot loads equivalent of pressure. So you're looking at, to get it out to the effectiveness, you're looking at about 68,000 PSI, which is around the detonation range of the chamber uh, for a small frame AR. So that's, that's not a safe loading at all. It burns through everything, fractures, and you're probably going to damage the gun or damage yourself with that especially with a stainless steel barrel so yeah don't do that just kind of roll with it so for me personally because there's more case capacity and getting a 6.5 brindle to 60,000 psi um, is not considered unsafe um, it is towards the max range you look you've got about a 3,000 round bolt life 3,000 round barrel life uh, at the most, 
before you see too much accuracy degradation and you start having failures. Um, but you get that extra little bit of oomph behind it and you get that extra little bit of distance and range specifically. So, yeah. Now we've gone over the cartridge. Let's go over into the generics of what all comes into a SPR. So you want to have a good shooter reference point. So what that means is where the part of the gun touches the shooter. So comb height is going to be the first and probably the most important aspect of it is comb height. So that way you get right dead center behind the optic as much as possible. Second, which is not as important, but it's still attached to the stock at the length of pull. Um, and the last is the front end of the gun, which I believe is the second most important. And that's a good hand guard and um, good hand guard and mounting point for a bipod. So you want to have a bipod that doesn't allow a lot of rail flex. As you can kind of see, there's a little bit there, but not much you can do. It's just a mid-rest industries rail. It's a clamp on, so not exactly peak of anything. Um, my Geisley's a little bit stiffer, uh, and a little bit light, well, a fair bit lighter, but a fair bit stiffer, and it's all aluminum, so this gun is a lot lighter than that one, and it's shooting a larger bullet, uh, same size cartridge, same, uh, small frame AR cartridge slash intermediate cartridge, so not too bad. Um, we'll probably end up having to rebarrel this since 6.5 is kind of going the way of the dodo when it comes to specific loadings, and I don't really want to get into hand loading with this, so yeah. This has also a fluted barrel. Uh, it's a heavy profile barrel past the gas block, so it's 9.75, well, not, not point, 9.25 thickness. It's got a Otter Creek Labs hydrogen 6.5 can on a 20 inch barrel with a um, normal thread device so it does add a full nine inches to the 20 inch barrel which is good because it's titanium can so it doesn't spark because it's so long but makes this thing really awkward to move around with but that being said it is a good gun good overall concept and I believe every squad slash fire team need one needs one if you don't have a squad and you just have a fire team have some precision ability with it if you just have or if you have a squad only one fire team member needs to have the precision ability and the second one needs to be able to assist them uh, I'll go over my builds so I guess back to this one this one has the B5 uh, precision stock, whatever it's called, PRI gas buster charging handle, uh, FCD Q 50 degree lever, which is really nice. You can get it on and off safe pretty quick. Just a regular Geisley SSAE. Uh, the Mark 8, Mark 4, one of the two. Mark IV, uh, Geisley Rail. Uh, the reason I wanted that one is, well, one, I already had it lying around. Um, and two, it's got this pick and tinny that's pretty low profile up front. So it keeps a bipod pretty close to the gun. Uh, allows you to have a little bit lower profile when you set the gun down and you're in the prone. And it allows you to have a little bit better shooting angle when you have to shoot both upwards and downwards so it allows the gun to be lower closer to that fulcrum point of sorts um faxon 20 inch fluted barrel chamber and 6.5 grind of course uh caveman heat ring which tells me when i need to let the gun cool down um, so that way it's not 
obnoxiously hot and it kind of goes off a little bit before heat mirage, mirage starts so it allows me to kind of peek in see oh this is green this like army green thing is now lime green so it lets me have a little bit of advance notice uh night force 5 to 25 which is my favorite out of the military scopes um, it does have the trimmer 3 reticle in it but this one is easily my favorite out of the like a little bit above medium power scopes uh pretty solid overall it's on a badger ordnance mount with the angle cosine indi uh, angle cosine indi indicator and the level um has the rear sight on it the front sight's not up there yet uh, i just haven't gotten around to mounting it been a little bit lazy uh gun's kind of expensive so it does have a tracker on it but that's not for anybody else but me um it does have a it does have the ability to kind of use it a little bit quickly if need be pick it up and go to work with it be comfortable get a good comfortable grip on it um yeah and i do have the sunshade on it all the time because i'm in texas and this thing does kind of hurt your eyes a little bit when you are looking kind of not into the sun, but even a little bit in the sun, it's still got enough light transmission that it, it it's it's rough. So, otherwise, great scope. Uh, the gun's going to have to probably get rebarreled. Uh, just at uh, Sharps Rifle Company, BCG, with the uh, JP Enterprise high-pressure bolts. So that way you can run a little bit higher pressure and it last a little bit longer. Pretty solid overall. It's got FCD parts and Sons of Liberty parts throughout most of it. All the little parts are either FCD or Sons of Liberty. Except for the pins, they're oversized takedown pins from JP Enterprise. And that's just to take up the slop because these are not fitted receivers, but there's no slop in here whatsoever. There's no um accu edge or anything like that they are two regular forged and milled receivers they are not machined receiver set um, and there's no slop whatsoever so that's the nice part about being a competent builder is you have the ability to adjust things as need be and fit parts this mark 12 is got a ballistic advantage barrel that sucks um the otter creep lab suppressor the ocm5 this one's pretty solid um it's got the allen engineering mount yhm gas block which that one has those have tendency to rust on them the coatings usually suck uh again pri gas buster charging handle uh, Badger Ordnance Selector, which is accurate for the Mark 12. Um, A5 length receiver. This is the 9 position from FCD slash Sons of Liberty. This is the FCD variant, but the Loyal 9 is the same. Uh, the regular Voltor is 7 position. So this gives you a little bit more adjustment range when other people shoot it. Uh, and this just has my 1 to 10 on here for now, just as a placeholder. Generic parts get generic parts get lower. Uh, bad lever like all the guns in my collection. This isn't mine, but I'm getting to borrow it and use it as a concept to kind of show you guys. It's got some of my stuff on it, though. Um, the Atlas bipod with the... Uh, slapjack which the slapjack is actually pretty solid if you guys have never seen that it allows you to normally pull it out and deploy it quickly but obviously the gun's not really in that position to deploy still allows you to use the 45 degree on the front which is nice so i had to put the my slapjacks all in the rear so that way the bipods folded her away so if the suppressor's not on the gun the gun's still a little bit shorter 
But yeah, that goes into the SPR concept and then the SPR builds that I've been a part of. So yeah, it comes down to what you need um, in your selection. So if you have questions, feel free to comment. Uh, I'll get back to you guys on it. Uh, send me DMs on Instagram if you need be. Uh, yeah, y'all have a good one. Enjoy. Peace out.